everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go through some examples of using the list interface in Java. I already have a main coded up here, and I'll begin to take a few notes, but then I want to head over to the documentation and show you the list interface. So that's my first note here, is that list is not actually a class in Java. List is an interface. It's part of the Java Collections framework. There's a lot of really great reusable data types and classes and interfaces in the collections framework that you should check out. We would use a list when we're solving a problem that requires a sequence, right? An ordered list of elements. Now, you're probably familiar with arrays. Why would you consider using a list over an array? Well, an array is fixed in size. When you declare an array, you provide a size declarator and that specifies how many elements this array can have. Let's say that over time you find out that your array actually needs to store even just one more element, you have to create a new array and then copy the old array over into the new array. So the types that implement list include array list and link list. And these two classes, array list and link list, can grow and shrink in size. So that's one huge, huge, huge reason to use the list interface to declare your type over, say, using just an array. Also, list has a bunch of really great methods that are already defined. So array list and link list, by implementing list, will also have these methods defined. In fact, they'll provide the implementations of those methods in the list interface. So let's take a look at the list interface. Here I have the documentation from Java pulled up for the list interface. You can see here that list has a parameterized type E. This means that when we declare a list, we'll specify the type of the elements in the list. We'll put that here where E is. For example, if our list contains strings, then for E, we'll put capital S string as the type of our elements. This does mean that all the elements in a list have to be the same type, and that's the same for arrays in Java as well. Here's some great description and information related to the list interface, which I encourage you to read at your leisure. A few things to point out, uh, for example, lists like Java arrays are zero based. Uh, here's a mention of the linked list class. There's iterators that you can use for lists I'm not going to do an example of that today, uh, but feel free to read through this and learn more about the list interface. Down here we have the list of methods in the list interface. So I want to go through just a few of them to give you a general high-level overview of what are some typical list operations that we'll be able to use on array lists or link lists. First off, we should be able to add and remove elements from a list. That's what makes lists able to grow and shrink in size. So both add and remove are overloaded. So here for add, we can pass in an element to add to the end, like an append operation, or we can specify the index to insert this position or insert this element at this position. For remove, we can specify an index to remove, or we can specify an object to search the list for and remove the first occurrence of. Some other helpful uh, methods include clear and is empty. Clear will move all the elements. Is empty will tell you if the list is empty or not. Size is really helpful. It's like the length field on an array. So on an array, if you were to use length, it would tell you the number of elements. On size, uh, using size on a list will do the same thing. Uh, some other interesting things in here. Uh, get, if you need to get an element at a certain index, you'll use get instead of the hard brackets. Contains is like a search. It'll tell you if this list contains this element or not. And just a few, yeah, these are all really helpful. Uh, to array would be nice if you wanted to, or needed to for some application, get an array representation of your list. All right, let's head over to Java and code up some examples using these methods. So I'm going to have a list of strings. So here's my parameterized type right here. And I'll just call this something like 
my autumn words. It's fall right now when I'm recording this video. So there's lots of leaves, lots of pumpkins, uh, lots of fall related things. I will need to import java.util.list in order to use the list interface. This is just a declaration. I haven't initialized this to actually refer to an implementation of lists such as array list or link list. I'll do this on the next line. It's optional to put the type of the elements in these angle brackets here. The compiler can figure out that this should be a string based on how my autumn words was declared. So it's optional. You can put string in here if you want. I could pass in an initial size for my list, but I'm not going to. So this is initially empty. All right, now I'm going to go and add some elements to my list. So my autumn words dot add. I'll do leaves. I'll do pumpkin. Maybe I'll do Halloween. That's coming up here soon too. And how about the last one I do uh, will be uh, raking. <laughs> Raking the leaves. All right, I can print out my autumn words. What's nice is there's a two string defined for array list. So I don't have to do arrays.toString in order to get a string representation of my array like I'd have to do before. So here's a nice string representation of my list. This looks good. Let's print out how many elements or how many strings are in my autumn words. So that's my autumn words dot size. I'll also print out my autumn words dot get zero, zero base indexing. So this should return leaves. And there we see four in leaves. Next, let's do an example of removing an element. So I'll do my autumn words dot remove. Let's do both. I'll remove, let's say, the first element. I'll print out my autumn words. And then let's also do my autumn words dot remove. And this time I'll search. This will remove the, remove the first occurrence. Let's say I'll remove Halloween. And then I'll print out my autumn words again. Now there's just pumpkin and raking because I removed leaves, zero index, and Halloween. Comment this out so that I still have four words in my list. Next, I want to show you some useful algorithms that you can use from the collections framework. So I can do collections.sort. And I can sort in ascending order, alphabetical ascending order, my autumn words, and I'll print it out. So in alphabetical order, leaves, pumpkin, Halloween, raking is Halloween leaves, pumpkin, raking. I'll also do an example of uh, shuffle. Shuffle's kind of a fun one. You don't have to write your own algorithm to do this. So sorted and shuffled. I want to mention that for your parameterized type, you have to specify a reference type. You cannot specify a primitive. So I couldn't do something like list sub int. That wouldn't work. I have to instead do something like list sub uh, or list of integers, capital I integer. So all eight primitives in Java, such as int, double, float, char, boolean, byte, etc., they all have reference types associated with them. So char has capital C character, double has capital D double. You'll have to use those instead. What's nice is you can still declare, say, an int 
to uh, store a value of an element in a list of capital I integers because Java does something for you called uh, auto boxing. So auto boxing, I'll say unboxing, uh, in Java is used to convert between say capital I integer and int. Okay, but this would also work for capital D double and double uh, character and char, et cetera. So with this little piece of information, I have a little task for you to try. So go ahead and declare a list of the first 10 square numbers. So the first 10 square numbers would be like one, one squared is one, four, two squared is four, nine, three squared is nine, and then all the way up to 100 because 10 squared is 100. Then I want you to print out the list in reverse order. Print out the list in reverse order. A few different ways to do this. I'll go through the solution now. So I need to have a list of integer type. I'll call it my squares. And this time I'll do a new linked list because why not? So I'll go through and I will add to my squares i times i. So we'll test here and make sure that I actually do get 149 all the way up to 100. That looks great. So now I want to print these out in reverse. So there's multiple ways to solve this. I could sort uh, using a comparator to put them in reverse. I could just write a for loop and walk through the last index to the first index and print out each element. The solution I'm going to use is actually much simpler than either of those. I'm going to use collections.reverse and I will pass in my squares. Now I should see 100 first and one last. And it looks like I do. There are a lot of great methods that you can use in collections. This is not what I want. This is what I want, collections. So here are the methods here that you can use. So let me just search for reverse really quick. Uh, so here's reverse. Reverse is the order of the elements in the specified list. So always great to check and see if there's a nice optimal tested algorithm you can use, collections is a great place to start. That concludes my list fun example. We went through two lists, the first one a list of strings and the second one a list of integers. Thanks for watching.